Hello everybody and welcome to the Go Home Show of Impact for our Against All Odds pay-per-view. It is ICR Daredevil here with another episode in our TNA series in TW 2020. Uh, like I just said, it is a couple days out from our Against All Odds pay-per-view. And uh, we will have to see what kind of momentum is built up for that show. Of course, that show is going to be main evented by Austin Aries challenging Shelton Benjamin for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. On that show as well, we have the X Division Championship on the line in a triple threat matchup. Jay Lethal defending against Chris Sabin and Paul London. Uh, we have the tag team titles on the line as the Briscoes take on Red Dragon. And then we have the Knockouts Championship on the line as ODB challenges Velvet Sky. Uh, we also have, you know, a bunch of other matches that have been added to the card. And we'll kind of have to see how things play out with that show. Let's dive into things. We open up. With a 69, nice, uh, as MVP is in the ring kind of promo, talking about how Sean Benjamin is going to retain. He's uh, he's not here tonight, but he will be here at Against All Odds, and he will retain his TNA World Heavyweight Championship because he is the franchise player. He is the big name that this company needs better than Samoa Joe, better than AJ Styles, better than everybody else, including Austin Aries, which... The mention of his name brings out Austin Aries. MVP just kind of chuckles and says, I can't believe that you won that number one contenders match last week because D'Angelo De Niro already beat you. He already took care of you. Why you're getting a TNA World Heavyweight Championship match is beyond me because you have already been beaten by De Niro. So what do you think Benjamin is going to do to you? And Aries says, you know what? I did lose to D'Angelo De Niro. I can admit that, but I won't lose at against all odds i will win the tna world heavyweight championship make sean benjamin have a short title reign and make you have to you know make uh add even more pain to you uh as i continue to kind of torture the beat down crew as it is um it's not that great of a promo but <laughs> but aries is very confident that he's going to win at against all odds um so yeah we'll have to see how that ends up playing out uh, Sean Benjamin not here tonight. He's working for New Japan, so that's why he wasn't really featured in this promo at all. But then we get a 69 rated segment uh, that really just. All right, so I have questions. <laughs> I, I have questions. First, why did I improvise well through the segment? My stats aren't that good. Secondly, why did Joe not improvise well through the segment? Thirdly, how did this get a 69? Why why is a is a CR Daredevil and Samoa Joe promo doing as well as an Austin Aries and MVP promo? I mean, I guess maybe the storyline being involved kind of helped it out, but still. Nevertheless, backstage segment where yours truly is walking to his office. You know, it's one of those things that he it's uh it's kind of showing like before the show started. Where we're walking to our office for tonight's show, when all of a sudden we get slammed up against the wall by Samoa Joe. You know, one of those things where he grabs our shirt and slams us up against the wall. Maria's freaking out because, of course, she's walking with us. Um, she's not actually in the, technically in the segment, but as you see, it says Maria helped out Daredevil because she's. I put her as a manager, so that way it's one of those things. It's like Maria's technically always with Daredevil and vice versa, kind of thing. But anyway, um. You know, Maria starts calling for help and Daredevil, and, and we're just like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Joe, listen. I know. I know you have a lot of anger right now. You want a piece, you want to destroy the beatdown crew. I get it. I 100% get it. Sheldon already has a match at Against All Odds. I couldn't give you that title matchup. I'm sorry. That's just, it just happened that way. I can't give you that. Eddie Kingston and Homicide are already in a match as well. They've they've had they have a match signed. MVP met with me uh, over this week and got a match signed. It's gonna be Eddie Kingston and Homicide taking on Colt Cabana and Jimmy Jacobs set against all odds. So you can't have them. But there is a member you can have. There is a member of the beatdown crew that is not in a match right now, and that is D'Angelo De Niro. So I'm gonna book you. And De Niro at Against All Odds. I know it's not the one you want. 
I know you want your hands on Kingston for costing you the match. I know you want your hands on Benjamin. You want the title back. I get it all that. Take out De Niro. And Joe just kind of slowly lets us down. She says, fine. He is dead meat. And then walks off. So there you go. Samoa Joe versus D'Angelo De Niro set four against all odds. Joe, very enraged, very pissed off, and is going to quite possibly destroy D'Angelo De Niro. We'll have to see what happens. 69 rating here for this segment. Then we get a 62 rated matchup. All right, well, it's, it's good to know that at least. But uh, in a decent matchup, Cole Cabana defeats Homicide 959 by, by submission with the inverted Boston Crab or the Billy Goat's Curse, if you will. 62 rating for the match. Um, Homicide and Cole Cabana don't seem to click, so it would have been a better rating had they, uh, you know, if they didn't have bad chemistry. 52 from Homicide, 57 from Cole Cabana. As, uh, it does gain heat for the storyline, though. As that storyline advances, of course, like I said, uh, in that segment just before, these two, uh, you know, their two teams, Cabana and Jacobs and Homicide and Eddie Kingston set to fight at Against All Odds. And in the typical, we have a tag match at the pay-per-view setup. What are we going to do today? We're going to do two singles matches. So we got Homicide and Cole Cabana now. And then later in the show, we've got Jimmy Jacobs versus Eddie Kingston. So that should be very interesting to see, but... Cole Cabana with a victory here, getting a little bit of momentum on the side of the former tag team champions. We'll have to see how things play out in the Kingston and Jacobs match later on in the night. Then we have a 60 ready segment as we see Beer Money backstage. Um, it's one of those things that James Storm is, uh, that Bobby Roode's kind of standing, uh, sitting in a, a locker room getting ready because they actually have a tag team match up here tonight against two members of Future Shock, Adam Cole and Roderick Strong. So they're going to be taking them on tonight. And James Storm comes in, you know, as Bobby Roode's kind of taping up his, his uh, wrists and all that stuff, and they just kind of have, like, this awkward interaction with each other where they're like, listen, we are facing each other at Against All Odds. The winner gets a shot at the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Understandable. But tonight we got to stay focused. It's all about beer money. It's about beer money winning this matchup. It's about Beer Money beating Adam Cole and Roderick Strong. And, and uh, you know, getting more momentum as a tag team. James Storm's like, hey, I mean, I have no problem with that. We can we can do this. You know, we've, we've done this before. We can team up tonight. And then this weekend, we will, we will face each other. Whoever wins will be the one who has the title shot. Whoever loses, you know, will be there to support the other. It's as simple as that. And they kind of shake hands a little bit, but there is this awkward tension between the two of them. It's almost as if Rude's a little, you know, he's got a little bit of a different, I don't know. He's, it is, he doesn't seem as friendly as he normally does. So we'll have to see what ends up happening with that. But 60 rating here, not too bad. Then we have a 54 rated matchup. The Seas Cheerleader and Melissa defeat Allie in A43 by Pinfall the Kudo Driver. 36 from Allie, 53 from Melissa. Uh... Yeah, just Melissa getting a uh, uh, cheerleader. Melissa getting a nice little victory here over Allie, who uh, I don't know if this is technically her Impact debut. She might have had one or two matches on Impact before. She's been mostly working on Explosion because um, her stats aren't the greatest at this point. But she's somebody who I, you know, she's uh someone who I can keep kind of building up a little bit. She's got you know thirty six entering performance isn't terrible, uh, but Melissa gets the victory kind of decisively. Uh, the bigger story is what happens after the match, because after the match, um, Cheerio Melissa is getting ready to hit Allie with another kudo driver before Evie and Candice LeRae come out to interrupt things. Of course, you know, Melissa said that they, that, uh, you know, she was freaking out on Evie recently, said that she demanded respect from Evie one way or another. So, uh, they come out to help out Allie only to be blindsided and attacked by Kana. Kana comes in and just wrecks that wreck, just lays out Evie and Candace, laying them completely out. Cheerleader Melissa is just kind of standing there, like a little un, you know, kind of a little unsure about Kana before she smiles and raises Kana's hand. So it looks like Cheerleader Melissa and Kana have uh, joined forces here in some capacity. And yeah, we'll have to see where things go with that. Gains heat for the storyline, got a 40 rating. 
We will have to see where things go with that heading forward. We get a 69 rated matchup. Nice rating. As uh, Rhino and Kenny King of the House of Truth defeat Chris Saban and Paul London in 1107. When Rhino pinned London with a gore after, after uh, miscommunication between Paul London and Chris Saban. 69 rated for the match. Very nice rating. 47 from Kenny King. 52 from Rhino. 66 from Paul London. And 63 from Chris Saban. Gained heat for the storyline going on. So the idea with this, obviously, as you can probably tell, was that... Chris Saban and Paul London, the two challengers for the X Division Championship held by Jay Lethal, uh, had to were forced to team up tonight against House of Truth members. Kind of a, you know, it was Jay Lethal's way of being like, I'm going to wear them out before the match this weekend, and at the same time, I'm also going to, you know, te you know, we're going to have to force them to be teaming up as a, you know, as a team together. And they didn't really team up the greatest. Uh, it's not like one of those like bad chemistry things. It's just, you know, Chris Sabin's being a, an arrogant heel the way he is. And Paul London, you know, is trying to be a good guy. And so Chris Sabin would do a lot of like underhanded tactics stuff that London would kind of be like, what the hell, man? And then London would, you know, have the opportunity to do underhanded tactics and wouldn't take it. And Sabin would be upset about it. And the end came with Chris Sabin kind of uh, basically end up kind of hot, not hot shotty, but kind of uh, um, Paul London goes to go for a tag. And Saban kind of drops him over the top rope. One of the, uh, I'm trying to remember what the heck that they call that. Um, basically, like at the top rope guillotine kind of thing, where you like where you take their head and you and you drop off the apron and snap their their neck on the top rope kind of thing. But it causes London to kind of stagger out of the corner, only to get with the gore and the three count. So there you go. So Saban and London can't get along. But to be fair, they're not supposed to be getting along because this coming seven, uh, this coming weekend. They are going to be opponents as they challenge for the exhibition championship around the, the waist of Jay Lethal. So not only do Jay Lethal's challengers have a little bit of loss of momentum here, you know, with the, the loss here, but they also have some issues between the two of them. So Lethal might be able to take advantage of that, but we'll have to see what ends up happening. We get a 59 rated segment as Jeff Hardy just kind of cuts promo about EC3. It's not hyping an upcoming match because there's no upcoming match booked yet. But he's talking about EC3, says EC3 has had a lot to say about him lately and wants to use him as a target to kind of move up the ladder, so to speak. But the thing about that is that EC3 is simply just a spoiled child who believes that he is a lot better than he is thanks to his aunt, Dixie Carter. He says that he will... He will... Uh, he will basically, you know, expose EC3 for not being as, you know, for only being good because Team Dixie was around him all the time. And that now he's, now he, that he's basically on his own. I mean, he does have Dixie still, but now that he's basically on his own, he will be exposed as the, uh, as the little punk kid that he is. And he will uh, not be using Jeff Hardy as some sort of stepping stool to the next, uh, the next ladder or the next, uh, rung here in TNA, so to speak. Obviously, Jeff Hardy's promo was a lot better than what I just described. <laughs> I was just stumbling over that, but just kind of, you know, puts over the fact that uh, EC3 can talk a lot of game, but he can't back it up, essentially, is what he's saying. We get a 62 rated matchup here as Eddie Kingston defeats Jimmy Jacobs in 842 by pinfall the backdrop driver. Uh, 63 from Kingston, 50 from, Ed from uh, Jimmy Jacobs, advanced the storyline, suffered from a lack of psychology. In a nine-minute matchup with Jimmy Jacobs and Eddie Kingston, it suffered from lack of psychology. Huh. All right. I guess. You'd think that Jacobs would have had enough psychology to help to uh, help keep the match going, but I guess not. Nevertheless, 62 is not too bad. I didn't lose heat for the storyline, so that's always a good thing. But, uh, yeah, so Eddie Kingston wins. And, of course, as the, <laughs> you know, as the typical thing is, now both sides have momentum ahead of the tag match at Against All Odds. So we'll have to see how that ends up playing out. 63 here for this. As uh, says Charles Betts was very underwhelming. Probably because he's not a uh, very uh, great talker. But he did he did uh, improvise well, apparently. But it's basically just Kurt Angle kind of going over um, the tag match that they had recently. Kind of, you know, it's one of those things that like they're watching the monitor 
and they're watching the tag match back and like Kurt's kind of pausing a couple different times and be like, see here, you could have done this instead of this. Like you could have, you could have gone for a, a double like takedown instead of what you did here and all that kind of stuff. So it's basically just the continuation of like the mentorship for Kurt Angle mentoring Charles Betts here. 63 rating here. Then we get 61 as Christopher Daniels just cuts a backstage promo. I don't really have a lot for Daniels right now because Kazarian was out. I had something playing for bad influence and then Kazarian got out with his injury. I think he comes back either next week or the following week. Um, so this was basically just Daniels kind of cutting a uh, promo talking about how when his buddy, when uh, Kazarian comes back, bad influence will get things back on track after losing it at, uh, um, Genesis. Wow. I just completely stayed spaced on the name. No, it wasn't Genesis a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I, t I apologize. My mind is all over the place today. It's, it's, it's been a day. Um, but, uh, he just kind of talks about how they're going to get back on track and about how people are going to need to start taking the fallen angel very seriously around here in TNA. We have a 55 rated matchup as Madison rain defeats Daphne in 732 by pinfall, the raindrop 54 for Madison rain 35 from Daphne. Uh, Madison Rain again, someone who doesn't really have a storyline going on right now. She doesn't really have any sort of thing going on right now other than just, you know, beating people. Um, you know, I do have plans for her, uh, in the short term coming up here soon. I just need to get to that, but, uh, she gets a victory here over Daphne. Um, and, uh, you know, keep looking, still looking good as the former knockouts champion here. Speaking of the knockouts championship. Uh, neither ODB nor Velvet Sky is featured on the show tonight. <laughs> That's, um, the storyline wise, uh, the commentators kind of talk about the storyline wise is that Velvet Sky and Angelina Love are on some sort of vacation. They're, uh, they don't, you know, they are so confident in Velvet Sky's victory at against all odds that they're just on vacation, just living it up, celebrating ahead of time. And that ODB is apparently training. That's, that's the storyline reason. Um, kayfabe or fourth wall wise. I I just everything I wanted to book on this show over I just ended up having room for him. So then we get a 63 rated segment as uh Christy Hemi performed poorly in the segment, but you know what? That's fine. Cause I'm I'm I am building her up. She's she's getting better at this point. Uh it helps to have that hot catchphrase, but she's getting better. So we'll get to the point where because I want to get her up to like kind of how Gene Oakland is in my WCW save, where like she is good enough that if people come in with like bad entertainment skills, then she can help kind of boost segments on her own with it. Obviously not as good as Gina Okerlund because Gina Okerlund is insane in that, but like just to the point where like she can help boost some of the people in our company who don't have entertainment skills. Cause like, for example, I can't really have red dragon cut a promo on their own right now, because even though they have SoCal Val managing them, their entertainment skills are so bad that it just wouldn't work out that well. Um, you know, and there's a bunch of other people in the company who are like that too, that I can't, I can't really get a lot of promos with because their entertainment skills just aren't really that good. So I feel like having Christy built up some more would get there, but she has an interview here with Magnus where Magnus is basically just kind of very upset about losing that match last week. The number one contenders uh, match for the shot at against all odds and says that he is going to get revenge on Austin Aries one way or another. So 63 rating here as a, uh, Seems like there might be something going on there with Magnus wanting a piece of Austin Aries. You know, maybe he wants maybe maybe uh he wants a piece of Austin Aries more than he wants the shot at the TNA World Title at this point. We'll have to see what ends up happening with that. And we get a 59 rated matchup as Abyss basically just kind of squashes Gunner in about in just under five minutes. Uh, 65 from Abyss, 42 from Gunner. Yeah, this is basically just Gunner being squashed. Um, and Abyss looking strong. Um, I kind of realized that putting him with the K and then I kind of like stumbled out of the gates with coming up with or uh, with uh, what I was going to be doing with the decay because some stuff came up and changed it. So uh, now I'm kind of a book, you know, I need to kind of get Abyss back on track of being like kind of a monster heel kind of thing. So he uh, he goes out here and he just squashes Gunner. He's probably going to squash some people here soon because um, I have to do a little bit of stuff. Uh, with some of the other members of the Decay before I can really get them into the storyline that I want to get going. So, But 59 here as Abyss gets a dominant victory. My God, what in the hell happened to my stats? <laughs> I've just put it out there right now. I did not do anything to my stats. 
I may have to look at that after this after this uh, episode. I don't. I didn't do anything to my stats, but for some reason, I'm just the character of CR Daredevil is just suddenly you know. Granted, AJ Styles is in this. Who AJ Styles on his own could probably cut like an eighty something rated promo, but still, the fact that you know that I anyway anyway. Um, we see yours truly, who was very underwhelming in this. So I guess there's that. But you see, we see yours truly uh, walking the halls backstage. And AJ Styles approaches him, or approaches me, and he's like, listen, you know, I saw what happened with Joe earlier, and then I, I know he wants, he wants revenge, he wants to destroy people, all that kind of stuff. Um, so he's got that match with D'Angelo De Niro, I know that. I know that Kingston and Homicide are booked, I know that Benjamin is obviously booked, but I want the fifth member of the BDC. I want MVP at Against All Odds. And yours truly is just kind of like, you know, honestly, I'm not against that. You guys, you know, you've had, you had a, a, a banger of a title matchup last year. I'm not against that. I, I would like to see the BDC get some, you know, get what's coming to them. I'd like to see them kind of get kicked in the mouth a bunch, so to speak. So yeah, I, that's official for this, for this weekend over you and MVP one-on-one at against all odds. And so there you go. So Another match booked for against all odds. AJ Styles versus MVP. We'll have to see how MVP ends up taking that because he's kind of taken more of a like a manager role recently and not uh, not been stepping in the ring as much lately. So we'll have to see how he ends up reacting to that. But uh, there you go. And then our main event of the evening. Yeah, that's right. This is our main event. Uh, in a 69 rated matchup. Very nice. A lot of 69s on this show. <laughs> Uh, Adam Cole and Roderick Strong of Future Shock defeat Beer Money in 1318 when Roderick Strong pinned James Storm with a super double knee gut buster after some miscommunication from Bobby Roode. It was one of those things where Roode accidentally hit Storm. Adam Cole was able to take care of Roode and then Strong pinned Storm with a super double knee gut buster or I guess, you know, just a, I guess it was from the top rope, but whatever, but nevertheless, 69 rating, very nice rating, as Beer Money lose due to some miscommunication between the two. So we'll have to see what that ends up leading to this Sunday. But there you go. Adam Cole and Roderick Strong get a victory here in the main event of Impact. Good stuff there. The show itself gets a 69 rating. <laughs> Another nice rating. But unfortunately, this nice rating lost its popularity in 14 regions because we didn't really have a lot of like big segments on this show. Um, our best segment was the Styles and Daredevil segment that got a 72. Everything else was a 69 or lower on this show. So, you know, I, it's not the best, it's not a good go home show. I will admit that it's not a good go home show, but, uh, but you know, I feel like we'll, we'll get things turned around. Um, and, uh, kind of go from there because it was like sh kind of shortish, um, I wanted to kind of save a few people who I know would get better in ring performances for us. I wanted to kind of save it some people because of the short week that we've got. Um, I wanted to save them from in ring competition, and that's when it ended up hurting me. But you know what? I'm not. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Um, despite the fact that two of our broadcasters were not happy about the rating there, I'm not too worried um, because we'll uh, we'll bounce back. We'll bounce back at against all odds. Not worried at all. Um, so yeah, there's that, uh, what happened in the news is that Damian Sandow, AKA Aaron Stevens, uh, decided to, I'm trying to remember what happened with it. He, yeah, he went on a political rant. He did a whole, he went on this like crazy political rant. And so now WWE are staying quiet about that. Uh, explosion happened. Saw Eddie Edwards defeat Zima Ion in the main event. Saw some other matches happened. Candice Lorraine and Evie got a victory over members of the Decay. Um, Jimmy Jacobs actually ended up working twice this week. Uh, but yeah, that was that kind of thing. Our, ta our Knockouts Tag Team Champions had a promo with Christy Hemi. Um, that, like, this is another case of what I was saying earlier with Christy Hemi. Is that, you know, because Io and Mio Shirai aren't really that good at promos right now. So putting Christy in this, I mean, this got a 44, but putting Christy in this kind of would have helped, uh, kind of helped bring that up. And the reason why this got a 44 is because the crowd was kind of disinterested at that point, because some of that stuff in the middle of the show was all unimportance versus unimportance. Um, so if the show, if the crowd had actually been 
you know, at least normal with that, then maybe they would have, uh, maybe that that rating would have been a bit higher, but yeah. So there's that. Uh, ratings for the night. 3.5 million people watching Impact. Still the best rated show of the night, even if it was a lower show than normal. NXT had a 67. Saw Corey Graves defeat Hideo Itami and Tyler Breeze to retain the NXT Heavyweight Championship. FIP had a 55. Saw Mr. Anderson and Hostop Fernandez defeat Rob Echoes and Bobby Lashley in a cage match. And Ring of Honor had a 58. Saw Bully Ray Matt Hardy defeat the Briscoes. So our tag team champions just lost on Ring of Honor <laughs> to Bully Ray Matt Hardy. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Whatever. But there's that. Uh, that is going to do it for this episode um again not you know not not a great go home show unfortunately um but uh but we're gonna get there we're, we're gonna get things turned around we'll have a, a really good pay-per-view this weekend of course we'll have uh you know a lot of really good matches on that show and we'll have to see how it all plays out but thank you all for watching definitely appreciate it um if you uh want to because that because it would be super awesome of you you can like uh, the video and comment on it down below you know maybe you're hyped up for against all odds you want to throw out predictions or anything like that that kind of thing uh but until sunday when we see you for the next episode in the series for against all odds we will see you tomorrow on the channel for yet another video